Well, hey there, everyone. My name is Brady. Welcome to The Mission, and thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. We've got a lot going on around our church, so we wanted to take a few minutes and tell you about some things coming up for you and your family, so check this out. Women of Wonder is a night of inspiring speakers, powerful prayer and worship, great friends connecting, and lots of fun, goodies, and prizes. A girls-only getaway night planned just for you. God is moving, and we're moving with him. Join us at the Mission Church, Vacaville, August 20th from 7 to 10 p.m. in the hangar. Be revived, restored, and refreshed. Looking forward to seeing you there. Hey, Mission Kids, when Jesus was a boy, he grew in wisdom. God wants us to discover wisdom, too. When we make a wise choice, we reflect the character of Jesus to the people around us. So come join us as we dig deep on Sunday mornings. Tired of just sitting in another conference or school? Welcome to the Mission Summer Series of Prophetic Training. Experience an activation-rich environment where you expand your gift of prophecy through action under the instruction of world-class prophetic trainers. Activate offers biblically-based foundations and creative activations for beginners, intermediate, and advanced levels of prophetic training. We meet at the Mission the first Friday night of each month at 7 p.m. Each training you'll give and receive multiple encouraging prophetic words. Here's the topic we'll be exploring August 6th, perceiving, and by the end of this school, you'll discover multiple ways to receive and deliver prophetic information and grow confident in your ability to hear God's voice. Each session is only 20 Teens are free. You can register at imissionchurch.com. Something remarkable can happen when a child starts learning to see themselves the way God sees them. To us, that's real confidence. So join us as we press play August 3rd through 6th and encourage every child to walk in complete confidence because they are known, they belong, they are forgiven, they can make a difference. For more info, visit imissionchurch.com. Are you a young adult looking for a place to deepen your relationship with God and other young people? Join us at our Young Adult Home Group August 5th, starting at 7 p.m. Come expecting a time of connection, worship, and encouragement. You can check the website for details. And hey, thanks again for hanging out with us this weekend. If you have questions about anything that you've heard today, or if you just want to find out more about the church, visit our website at imissionchurch.com, where you can register for events. You can also check us out on social media and on our Mission Vacaville app. We hope you have a great day. Good morning, Mission family. Welcome those that are online with us this morning. I want you guys to stand with me as we enter into worship today. Jesus, we're here for you. We're here to worship you this morning with everything we have. I read. 
worthy of every song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. We live for you. We breathe for you. We breathe for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart.
no one like you. So today we mark ourselves for an encounter with you. We open up our hearts and say, come on in and make residency in our hearts this morning. Come and encounter us this morning that we've come for you, Jesus. We've come to encounter you this morning. So come into our hearts today and encounter us and everybody that agrees with that says amen amen yeah you can give them a clap offering yeah he's amazing he's here for you this morning isn't it good to have bethany with us back with us this morning why don't you guys go ahead and have a seat we have some really cool stuff coming up this week we have our our VBS for our kids if you haven't signed up your children or grandchildren or your neighbors kids you can do that today out in the foyer it starts this week on the third so you don't want to miss that and then right after service today we have baptism so when we dismiss from here grab your kids go out to the courtyard and we're gonna baptize some people if you want to be baptized it's not too late just head out the west uh, door at the end of service and connect with Kathy and she'll get you set up to do that today and then we also have just a table set up out in the courtyard for anybody that wants to just hang out and have lunch today after service you can door dash something if you didn't bring any food with you just door dash it and just hang out and have lunch with uh, fellow people in the mission so that's right after service also and now can you give a warm welcome to our amazing Drake. Ryan's all right. No, Ryan's amazing. This guy's awesome. Hey, if you're a new person here, why don't you raise your hand? This is your first time. Um, I'm seeing someone in the spirit. Hey, show go go. Um, so uh, what we want you to do is connect with the, uh, oh, awesome. Right over there, we have our uh, pastors connected with you, and they're basically going to get you connected to the Rush Cafe. You'll get a free drink, um, tons of amazing drinks there, and fill that out so we can connect with you um, on a deeper level. So uh, it is my privilege. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to you. Um, it is my privilege to, uh, to do the offering this morning. And so if we could have the slide come up. Um, Oh, my Bible app is playing. I need you not to speak, and I'm going to say it, okay? Um, it's funny, uh, you know, for me, in my journey with having, coming out of a poverty mindset was huge. When I was younger, going into my school ministry years, man, I, um, I had some stinking thinking. And uh, then I met my wife, and then uh, she took over the finances, and then all of a sudden, my life changed. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, kind of. <laughs> Uh, no, she's amazing, and I've had to unlearn a lot of things, and, you know, when you grow up in, you know, the house I grew up in, it was just a lot of unlearning and, and learning. Oh, Holy Ghost. God has a different message. I'm going to interrupt God and continue what I'm saying. Just kidding. Um, but uh, how many guys know that uh, the way we grow up uh, sometimes isn't kingdom thinking, and God wants to get us to think like him? Amen. So I'm going to read a passage of scripture to encourage you guys this morning. It's Matthew 6, 25. Uh, it says, <clears throat> therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? 
Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But, everyone say, but, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You know what I love about that verse is that seeking first, when God says seek first the kingdom of God, it's preceded by God revealing himself as an abundant father. I'm going to say that again. When God says, when Jesus says seek first the kingdom of God, he first reveals reveals God as an abundant father. That the birds are fed and they didn't sow nor reap, that the lilies are clothed without toil or spinning, and if he does that, how much more will he provide? And, and I love that because when we're called to do some things that God's called us to do, there's going to be some financial challenges. Amen? And the question is, where do we put our eyes? Is it on the house that we're trying to sell? Then I'll do what God's called me to do. Is it on the next job? Then you'll have enough money. Is it on the promotion? Anytime our source is in anything but Jesus, we come under a spirit of poverty. And my encouragement today, this morning, is guys, let's remind ourselves that He is the source. Amen. And every good gift comes from our Heavenly Father, right? And, uh, and our giving gets to be a declaration that He's our source. And, uh, and I feel like as why don't we all stand up as we get ready to give? Um, that as we give and as we grow in our generosity, we're actually going to watch ourselves grow in dominion over our money. And that is really important as we understand what it means to advance the kingdom of God. That, man, I've heard it, I think it might have been Dave that said that your money is like soldiers and we're telling them what to do. Right? We're advancing the kingdom of God with our resources. Amen. So let's do that this morning. Uh, you can put your, put your money in the air, your fake money or your internet money, just in the air as if we're all going to, you know, have something in our hand that we're given. And uh, Jesus, we bless our giving. We declare it's going to accomplish the kingdom of God and, and, and move that forward. We declare it's going to bring uh, resources to people. We, we declare it's going to bring healing. It's, it's going to equip the saints. It's going to um, help people that need it. It's going to get people off their feet and back into what God has called them to do. And Lord, I bless the finances. I bless what it's going to do in Jesus mighty name. Amen. So why don't you guys, as we give, go say hi to somebody. And while you're doing that, my youth, Say hi to Monica. Raise your hand. Go ahead. Head to the corner. All the youth, I'm going to follow you right now. Follow Monica in the West Gate.
going on around our church, so we wanted to take a few minutes and tell you about some things coming up for you and your family, so check this out. Women of Wonder is a night of inspiring speakers, powerful prayer and worship, great friends connecting and lots of fun, goodies and prizes, a girls only getaway night planned just for you. God is moving and we're moving with him. Join us at the Mission Church Vacaville, August 20th from 7 to 10 p.m. in the hangar and be revived, restored and refreshed. Looking forward to seeing you there. Hey Mission Kids, when Jesus was a boy, he grew in wisdom. God wants us to discover wisdom too. When we make a wise choice, we reflect the character of Jesus to the people around us, so come join us as we dig deep on Sunday mornings. Tired of just sitting in another conference or school? Welcome to the Mission Summer Series of Prophetic Training. Experience an activation-rich environment where you expand your gift of prophecy through action under the instruction of world-class prophetic trainers. Activate offers biblically-based foundations and creative activations for beginners, intermediate, and advanced levels of prophetic training. We meet at the Mission the first Friday night of each month at 7 p.m. Each training you'll give and receive multiple encouraging prophetic words. Here's the topic we'll be exploring August 6th, Perceiving, and by the end of this school, you'll discover multiple ways to receive and deliver prophetic information and grow confident in your ability to hear God's voice. Each session is only $20. Teens are free. You can register at imissionchurch.com. Something remarkable can happen when a child starts learning to see themselves the way God sees them. To us, that's real confidence. So join us as we press play August 3rd through 6th and encourage every child to walk in complete confidence because they are are known, they belong, they are forgiven, and they can make a difference. For more info, visit imissionchurch.com. Are you a young adult looking for a place to deepen your relationship with God and other young people? Join us at our Young Adult Home Group August 5th, starting at 7 p.m. Come expecting a time of connection, worship, and encouragement. You can check the website for details. And hey, thanks again for hanging out with us this weekend. If you have questions about anything that you've heard today, or if you just want to find out more about the church, visit our website at imissionchurch.com, where you can register for events. You can also check us out on social media and on our Mission Vacaville app. We hope you have a great day. Well, good morning, church. Hey, I want to thank everybody that's in the house today and those that are online that decided not to make today a vacation day. This must be National Vacation Weekend or something. So many gone, but you are here and you are important, the important ones, right? <laughs> it's really good to have you here in the house. We, we love gathering together. Uh, I'm going to ask the uh, two people to come on up here, like uh, Pastor Tim May, if he'd come and, hey Tim, huh? And uh, Kathy Blank, come up here for, as we prepare for our war chest offering this morning. These are true giants of the faith, man, they really are, and Kathy's bring, bringing her team up there with her. Uh, our war chest offering this morning is in two different categories, uh, but that's in the local mission. For some of you who don't know, our war chest offering is taken first Sunday of every month, and it really is for projects, missions projects around the world. And uh, sometimes those projects are right here at home. And so this morning, well, last, last month, if you remember, we took uh, a war chest offering for, uh, to help the first responders' families. And we were able to give them $5,000 last week, so last month. So thank you so much for your generosity. And then uh, this morning we have uh, the Alpha Pregnancy Ministry Clinic uh, that Kathy and the team runs there that's been in the part of this community for a long time. And then Pastor Tim May, who has been a part of the mission for over 30 years and, uh, and has run um, Ebenezer Ministries, which goes into the into the. Uh, different prisons. He is recognized uh, around the state for his work in the prisons, just quality, quality work, and has seen the lives of so many people touched. So we're going to give, a, we're going to let the girls start first here, the women start first. So Kathy, why don't you come up and tell us a little bit about Alpha Pregnancy Clinics. Well, Alpha, I've been with Alpha for over 12 years, and I love it. Uh, we get to see a lot of lives changed. We get to see a lot of uh, people, we get to do the stuff, you know, we get to do the stuff because it's a nonprofit. It's a clinic, and so it's um, a 501c3, and women can come in there with uh, 
get pregnancy tests and find out what's going on. And a lot of times we get opportunities to minister to mm -hmm. people. And actually, I have a quick testimony. Would you come on, Lori? This is Lori. She is she um, is part of our team. And this recently happened, and I thought it'd be just real quick. Absolutely. Fun testimony. Okay. So first off, I was pregnant at 15. So I was a client at Alpha in Montana before I ever came to serve mm. at Alpha. And I want to say that speaking life in the womb and speaking life to souls, it is a generational thing. And the other day, I had the privilege of being in on an ultrasound with my granddaughter to see my first great-grandchild in the womb. Come on. And to see the nurse and one of the new nurses training be so kind to my granddaughter, who's 18. It was just such a blessing. So one thing my mom told me when I got pregnant at 15, and it was, I was very ostracized by the church and the school, she told me that sometimes you have to act like a lion to become the lamb that God created you to be. So I want you to think about that when it comes to speaking life in the womb and speaking life in Jesus Christ, that you can be bold like that, but you can also do it uh, knowing that you're going to have the lamb of God right there. Because the way that we overcome is he brings the blood and we bring our story. We bring our testimony. So I would like to encourage you that just like you have to be bold in your faith to share Christ with people, you can be bold like that with love and kindness to be able to speak life to people who are in unplanned pregnancies. So I want to thank you, Mission Church, for always helping us financially. We covet your prayers, and I want to encourage you today to share your stories, because that is how the pro-life message gets into the world with love and with kindness, because it is not a political thing, it is a gospel thing. That's right. And I just want to thank right. you and speak a blessing over your life That's today. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Pastor Tim, why don't you come up here? Tim is just one of our dear souls. We love this man so much. He has been an ambassador of the kingdom of God in the prisons. And so why don't you tell us a little bit of what you're doing now. And I know it's been an interesting time with COVID and all of that in the prisons, but you have uh, championed on. So, Yes. Amen. We were out of the prison for almost 15 months. We just got started back again. And praise God, the chapel services and some of the programs we're starting up again. Well, there's a waiting list. In fact, when I was speaking last Tuesday night, one of the inmates came up and said, Pastor, when are we going to do Toastmasters again? And what we do with Toastmasters is teach them how to speak. So when they get, get out of prison, they can get a job. And the other side of Toastmasters is that we teach them how to teach so that they could be instruments used by God in the prison for both believers and non-believers. Mm -hmm. That's great. The, yeah. And we do a lot of different programs that, of that type. But the other side of the coin is we partner with Prison Fellowship and we get a list of kids every year that need, that a list of kids that their mother or father has suggested be given a gift in the name of Jesus. Sometimes it's people who don't know the Lord that we get to minister to. And this year we had a young lady go up to camp and she found Christ at camp this year. And you as a body can get involved in many different ways. But the other, one of the things with, uh, is going into the prison, that's something to take away your fear. Uh, but the other side of the coin with Angel Tree, you can get involved with mm -hmm. delivering gifts, loving on the kids and things of that nature, as well as their parents, because parents need the Lord also. And we get the chance to minister to them. So just yeah. be prayerful and thankful. And I won't challenge you like I challenged the men and said, just get involved. <laughs> That's okay. You can do that. <laughs> get involved. The challenge, <laughs> yeah. the, the challenge is... Yeah. To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you can That's do right. that just by showing up. And one of the great things that I've been studying on love, because I tend to be a loner, uh, other than when I'm in the prison, people will tell you that, is that we all need to become imitators of Christ according to scriptures, according to scripture. And we imitate Christ by showing his love to others, mm -hmm. both behind the walls and in front of the walls. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. God bless you. 
So Angel Tree is a ministry we're part of every year too. And, and I understand you guys have, uh, are starting to develop a mobile unit. I understand, so we wanna be part of that. So this is our opportunity now. Why don't you stand up and get ready to give in this war chest offering. You can come and deposit it here. You can do it on your phones as you guys know how to do your phones. You can do it online, all of those things. But what, two great ministries that are really making a difference outside the walls. Outside the walls, isn't that good? All right, so Father, thank you for the joy of giving to places where there is great fruit, to bury these treasures into the soil that is producing a great crop. And we pray blessing over these that are leading these ministries and working in these ministries, pray covering and favor and financial uh, ability uh, coming their way every single day so that they can accomplish what you've called them to do. And we just bless your name in this offering now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, come on. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Tim. so much. Really makes a difference. It really is good to have Bethany in the house today. Just, uh, we just want to keep reminding her, but we never really let go of anybody, you know? <laughs> never really let go. Listen, I want us to be in prayer for, as a family for another family in our community that's just been devastated this week. Uh, Larry Grable passed away, leaving a family behind of two young, two girls and and auxiliary family and his wife. Uh, she hap his wife happens to be my cousin. Uh, so it's just a devastating loss. Uh, lost him to COVID, and uh, the family is is loving Jesus but recovering. So if you would be praying for them, it'd really be appreciated. Uh, they're just awesome, awesome couple. They go to the father's house. There'll be a service for them at the father's house on the 14th, I believe. And uh, so just remember them. Times of losses are difficult, as you know. Yeah, it's good to have Keith and Heather in the house too, come on. Come on up here, Keith and Heather. We haven't seen you guys for so long, we haven't seen your faces. Wow, we love this couple and their family. <laughs> hey, why don't you just greet the church? I'm, I'm, you know, uh, so good to see everybody today. How's everybody doing? Why don't you love Pastor Dave? <laughs> I know he's an apostle, but you know he's such a pastor too. Thank you. I was just thinking how much I appreciate that and his care for everybody and. He, you know, it's always in you, even if you're an apostle. You know, the nations are the apostle side, but the care for the individual is the pastor side. And I was thinking this morning during the uh, worship time, man, it, I said, it just feels so good in here. It feels like there's a just, the air's open, it's clear, it's clean in here, it's a new day. It feels like there's a shift in the house here. And the Lord was reminding me of the mandate of this house, which is 
uh, to the church of Thyatira. It's like mm -hmm. to the one who overcomes, I will give authority in the nations. Yeah. And yeah. th this is an overcoming place. I, 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 I was listening to Drake uh, share the offering and talking about overcoming. And I'm like, I remember when Dave first asked us to come here over 12, 13 years yeah. ago. And he said, Keith, you know, if you come here to the mission, you're coming for a fight. <laughs> and and uh, you, this, this, is, this is a place for warriors. Yeah. This is a place is. for overcomers, for conquerors, for more than conquerors, guys. This is not a place for people that want to just sit. Now, you can come in the pastor side, and there's a great team here that will get you healed. That's the pastor side, but they're not going to let you stay healed. Yeah, that's uh, right. uh, and just, I mean, healed, yes, but <laughs> that didn't quite sound right, did it? <laughs> they're not going to let you just stay sitting there getting healed. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to get activated. That's yeah, why that's, you were hearing ministries it. like Tim and then the the, you know, the, ch the child, yeah. you know, Alpha, Alpha. and yeah. all those ministries. Those, that's a way to get activated and to become a warrior. You yeah. live right here between Sacramento and San Francisco. This right here is a place that is, is it's, it's like you have to be like a Samson when you're here. Because there's, there's a, there's a, um, uh, the Lord showed me once when I was here, he showed me the, uh, the spirit of, um, I guess my brain's a little foggy here, of humanism here. And you're kind of pushing on humanism in this corridor here. Because I live in Southern California now, and there's a different battle there, but we didn't leave the battle here. Yeah. We Thank just you. went to a different part of the battle line. Yeah. We went to yeah. like the foot where there's, there's some stuff there that needs to happen, but there's stuff here that still needs to happen. Yeah. And I really feel like God's going to increase the governmental authority here in this house. I know Mark and Tammy's a, a big part of that. I know the prophetic community and the prophets here are a big part of that. But you're a part of that, and that takes authority, guys. That takes a warrior spirit. So I'm just so glad to be here today. It feels good. It feels like it's a new season. It feels like new marching orders, getting ready to be released. It feels like that angel of hope is still here championing yeah. you, saying, good is coming. It's a good day. Good is coming. So bless you guys. Good morning. Yeah, it's so good. good. Uh, another thing that I was really feeling this morning, I was kind of moving around the room during worship and just praying and just seeding into the atmosphere. And I really felt like God was just releasing and wanting to release just fresh encounters of intimacy and like his tangible presence. Hey, so if, if you've been crying out for more of that, will you just stand up really quick? I just want to go after that for a minute because I just feel like God is just, there's like a hunger, there's a... Yeah. There's just a hunger. Like, I feel yeah. a fresh hunger. So, Father, we just thank you for that right now, God. And, Lord, I pray for every person. I pray for a release of that intimacy, that fresh intimacy, Lord Jesus, with you. I pray for fresh fire of your presence just to be released in the house this morning, God. I pray, Lord, that it would just be so, that it would just saturate every single person in this room and that they would just encounter the more of you. Oh, so we just wait right now, Father. We just wait, Thank Holy Spirit. God. We just Thank say, come, Holy Spirit, Thank in a fresh God. way. Hey, yeah. ho, yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you Jesus. Lord. More, 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 Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's like right there. I just feel like it's like, just step into it, you guys. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Kind of dry Thank that you, fear in the, like, line in the sand, step into it. It's something that you can actually access. If yeah. you've been into that yeah. room yeah. before, you can access it again anytime. So That's it's right. like sometimes we just have to lay those things aside that are just trying to hinder us and hinder our mind, hinder our emotions, hinder those things and just kind of come out of agreement and say, Lord, I don't want to focus on that stuff anymore. I want to focus on you. The other day, we were walking around our complex down in Huntington and there was this crow that flew by. And a lot of times, you know, you see different things and, you know, as prophetic people, we see, you know, you see something, you're like, oh, you attach this, this thing to it. And so oftentimes crows kind of represent mm -hmm. something negative to us. And so I just had this <laughs> revelation as we were walking. And I was like, if you're enemy focused, yeah. then you're That's going it. to see that crow yeah. Yeah. with perspective of the enemy. But if you're God focused, then you're going to see that crow is just another bird. And I was like, <laughs> wow. It's just like that a crow is, is just a bird. Yeah. Like 
like it. If you're not devil <laughs> focused, and it, it just like hit me. Oh, so I think good, oftentimes though. we're just constantly looking at, oh, the enemy's gonna get me, or we're going after this, and we're in trials, and we're like tribulation and all these things. But it's like if we can just look up <laughs> and just remember the goodness of God in the land of the living, yeah. then a yeah, crow's just it. a bird. A crow is just a bird. It's a great bird. It's just another bird. But anyway, I leave you with that today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks so much. We are more susceptible to the grace of God than the works of the enemy. You know that, don't you? Just, it's just the truth, and we need to under, always live with that perspective. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I want to... Landon, would you come on up here, please? Landon has been such a blessing to this house. He didn't know I was going to do this, but we just can't let him go down to Southern California without saying goodbye and sending him out. Yeah. Love you, Landon. Landon has been so instrumental. I'll let you have grab that so you can say howdy. Um, in our bookstore, in revamping our bookstore and renovating that, and, and then our cafe. He's just done an amazing job of all of that. And he's just been a real inspiration to us around here. I mean, anytime you can look at a guy who's got tats and things in his nose. I mean, you know, this is really, and, and just know he loves Jesus like crazy. You know, that is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. We just love this guy. And we would, you know, we would love to keep everybody. But this is an apostolic house that sends out. And as much as I don't like that, I embrace it. I embrace it. It's part of who we are as a house. And uh, we just want to send you out. We just don't want you to just leave without unnoticed because you have been noticed and really appreciated in this house. Why don't you just say howdy? Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to thank all of you guys, you, everyone who I've spoken with, and for the opportunity to even serve you guys. It's been amazing serving you guys last year, and being here has just been so redeeming for me. Um, for those of you who know my story, just I've been able to come here and gain my healing and then go back with some marching orders. So I just want to thank you guys so much as well. Thank you, Randy. Come on, extend your hands towards this, this young man. Lord, we do not allow him to leave this place. We send him out in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We take the anointing of this house and we give it freely to be released over his life as he goes to combine with the anointing that is part of who he is. And we give him grace today to go and to be there and to establish the kingdom wherever he goes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Love you Thanks, Mark. Well, interesting time. Well, it's all, you know, I, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get to the message here about noon, so. It's family, right? Yeah. Family stuff. It's, it is family. It's good to have my grandkids from Alabama yeah. here this morning. Amy and Bryant's children, uh, our grandkids, Samuel, Samuel David, <laughs> miracle child, mom was told she could not have children out of her own womb, but nevertheless, God knows what he's doing, gave his little, gave his Samuel David, not so little anymore, and uh, our adopted baby, Isabel, why don't you guys come on up here, and then I want you to bring your dad with you, because Bryant's in the house again. It's good to have Bryant in the house. They grew up, didn't they? Crazy. I remember when we introduced... Bella, we introduced her, you could, you could put her in a, in a measuring cup this big. Their little butt sitting in that, that was her. That was how small she was at that time. And we were so excited to get her as part of the family and Bryant and Amy just had the faith to go after her and uh, make her a part of her own family. So good to have Bryant in the house. I mean, it's just like family reunion, family reunion. 
They're all part of a family back in Alabama now, and uh, we love Dana, uh, Bryant's wife. She's just perfect for these kids and perfect for Bryant, and because Bryant needed somebody perfect, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> but we, we just love these guys. I, you, would you mind praying over these guys for us? That'd be all right? Maybe I can get a couple of other people that know these guys well to, to come up here. Mark and Tammy, you, uh, you stood in Amy and Bryant's wedding, and we're part of that with them. Would you mind praying over them? Okay. It's all right, guys. It's all right. All right. Father, we just, uh, wow. Yeah. We love our history with you, Lord. We love how you pass on heritage and how you breathe on our past to bring it into our future. And Father, we thank you for these two amazing children and for their awesome father. And Father, we bless them as part of the mission family. We release over them, Father, anointing and power. But Father, also that sense of intimacy with you. Father, all that, that rules and reigns here in this house, Father, we release over them today. In Jesus' name. We thank you. Father, I just thank you for the power of family. Thank you for the power of family that you set us in families, Lord. And you're just constantly working to, uh, to grow us and to keep us and to keep us connected and loving one another. Just thank you for this family. Thank you for the connection. I pray for these kids, Lord, that they will just be able to hear your voice clearer than ever before, see your face like they've never seen your face before, and comprehend and understand everything they see and everything they hear from you. God, you are good in their lives. We speak into their identity and destiny, and we just say, Father, bring it forward in fullness and let them love you and serve you all the days of their life, Father. And just continue, continue, continue to give them a revelation of your love for them because once we have that revelation, Father, we can walk anywhere at any time. We praise you in Jesus' name. Well, here we go. You know, there are times, yeah, in closing, you know, there are times I allow myself the privilege of my position. You know, not very often, but sometimes. Um, yeah. I want to I wanna talk for just a few minutes, and I'm going to keep it to a few minutes because I can't wait to get to the baptism. The baptism is going to be taking place out here, outside here in just a few minutes. And we had the privilege of baptizing some people in water. And that's going to be just exciting. So I want to get right to that just as soon as we can. But I want to talk about some things that have already been even kind of mentioned this morning. That is the redemptive nature of God. Redemptive power of God to redeem any situation and to redeem anybody. Um, and then, and then I want to give an invitation that God gives to anybody that is willing to listen, to hear him, and respond. And so we're going to do that in just, just a very few minutes. I'm going to uh, introduce this by reading from my book, The Power of Your Life Message. This is not an attempt to advertise uh, my book. It, it, I don't even know if we have any in the bookstore anymore. But, but sometimes there are times when I want to say things in a particular way and that I know that I'm a better writer than I'm a speaker at times. And so I want to, uh, I'm just going to read just a little bit of this. I'll be all right with you guys. Yeah. This is the Power of Your Life message. It's, it's the chapter on divine contradictions. Oscar Wilde said, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Yeah. Quote, with a past like mine, how can I ever have a life that can be respected and helpful? 
How can I live a positive li- have a positive life message coming from the dysfunctional family and culture I was raised in? How can I get past all of my failures and faults and become the man or woman that I believe God wants me to be? I've heard these statements or similar expressions a hundred times or more over my years in vocational ministry, and they come from people who have become convinced that their past determines their future, that the hurtful, cruel world, words spoken to them by significant people in their lives are predictions of their potential. They have come to believe a lie, one propagated by the enemy in order to keep them stuck in their history and unable to live their God-intended purpose. The truth is that God loves to contradict the predictions of our upbringing, our failures, and the labels put on us by others. The Bible is full of those who began in failure but rose to triumph, those whose background would disqualify them from greatness only to surprise all as they fulfilled a powerful destiny. Take, for instance, Peter, a man who denied his relationship with Jesus only to become one of the most influential men in the early church. What about the woman at the well, living with a man who is not her husband, having had five of them? Yet her life message is that her testimony, come see a man who told me all the things I ever did, could this be the Christ? That testimony brought a village to believe in Jesus. How about Paul, one who took great pride in persecuting the Christians, yet became the most prolific writer of the New Testament. Part of his life message is expressed in his own writing. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We've heard the story of Jabez, thanks to the great book, The Prayer of Jabez by Bruce Wilkerson. Wilkinson. Jabez's story is tucked away in the genealogies of 1 Chronicles chapter 4. There's no reference to his parents' names. His birth was so painful that his mother gave him a name that labeled him for the rest of his life, Jabez, meaning one who causes pain. Every time he heard his name, he would have been reminded of what his mother thought of him, blamed for something he had no choice in. He was tagged with a name that predicted his life message, one who causes pain. But remember, God loves to contradict the predictions of our past. In spite of Jabez's painful beginnings and his mother's prediction, the writer of the Bible, the Holy Spirit, thought so much of Jabez's life message that he interrupted the genealogies in order to record it and tell his story. And here here it is. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And Jabez called on on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. He started by causing pain, yet became a man whose life message was that he was more honorable than his brothers. A man of great favor and influence and a man who did not cause pain, his life message contradicted his beginnings. God loves to contradict the predictions of our beginnings and of our failures. Aren't you glad? He is a redemptive God, and he wants to redeem everything in our life. Yesterday, we celebrated the home going of my dad, lived 96 years on the earth, and he uh, was an amazing man. Uh, love him very much, gonna miss him a lot. And in this book, I, I I took some time in this book to bring three examples of people, modern day people, who have illustrated the Jabez story. One of them was my wife, who was born, was uh, conceived by a family member that raped a 12-year-old girl. In today's world, that she probably would have been aborted. And uh, yet she was not, and I'm thankful for that. My kids are thankful for that. And her beginnings would predict something other than what she became. But God loves to redeem, loves to redeem those stories. And that story has been told over and over and over again to bring people to a realization of the value of life and to bring people to the realization that God will redeem everything. Another person that I use in the book is my mom. 
My mom was, uh, was also uh, raised up during the Great Depression, and I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if we really understand that, what that was like. The majority of the nation was unemployed. Soup kitchens were filled with lines of people every day getting one meal a day. People living in the parks, lit pick, people living in their cars, uh, people committing suicide because they just felt like they had no other choice. It was a terrific, horrific time in our, in our nation. My mom was raised in that. She, she was lived with uh, eight other brothers and sisters. My grandmother was a real woman of God, but she had to raise those kids on her own, essentially, because her husband was a man that you really didn't want to have around. He was abusive. He was destructive. He would, uh, when he would come home, it was very difficult on the family. They lived on the backside of my uncle's farm uh, in, uh, in Idaho. Uh, and he would come home, and there were times when he would come, and he would sit at a, at a whetstone and sharpen his knives in front of his kids, looking at them with the threat of, if you disobey me, I'll cut you. That's the kind of man he was. He was, a, he was a murderer. We knew this story much later in life because my uncle, who had seen him murder a man, when my grandfather found out that my uncle had seen it, he turned to him and said, if you ever tell this story, I will kill you. That was my grandfather, my mom's dad. That kind of lifestyle, that kind of excruciating growing up times would predict something other than what my mom became. My mom, a great woman of faith, led many, many, many women to the Lord, many girls to the Lord as she worked in children, in, in women's programs and, and uh, girls' programs throughout her lifetime. She was a teacher of the gospel, amazing woman of God, and she sat yesterday in, in our time and, and just so enjoyed it. She, in fact, so enjoyed it, she kept us up all night. So I'm running on a little bit of adrenaline this morning with no sleep. Um, but she is a phenomenal woman because God loves to contradict the predictions of our past and of the way we start life. He's just good at it. Another person that I, I mentioned in the book is my dad. And, and I didn't have a lot at that time when I wrote this chapter. I wasn't aware of a lot of how my dad was raised. I knew it was, a, it was not comfortable. Uh, I knew his parents very little, my grandparents, um, and I knew that uh, he again was raised in the Depression. They, they slept often, lived often in cars, uh, in the parks, um, and it was a, you know, a difficult, but that was, honestly, that part of his life was the easy part of his life. The difficult part was the way he was treated. He was abused as a child, he was abused emotionally, uh, I was never beaten, but he was abused emotionally, and which is, can be as, wor as, as much as or even worse than physical abuse. And uh, if, if you look up the diction in the dictionary under dysfunctional family, you'd see a picture of my dad's family. That's how dysfunctional it was. I mean, it's absolutely dysfunctional. Um, and I, I didn't know how bad it was until... Dad had an accident back in December. He drove his car through an intersection. Instead of stepping on the brake, he stepped on the accelerator. He's 95 years old, still driving. And uh, that was the last day he drove. So <laughs> He didn't like that, but we felt that was good for everybody. <laughs> but we had a chance, because the next day after that, mom fell and was taken to the hospital, and she was in the hospital for about three weeks, the hospital and a physical therapist. Uh, place for about three weeks, and so I had a chance to be with my dad often, sometimes slept in the house with him just to make sure he was doing okay, and um, had a chance to sit down with him, and one day he just started talking about his childhood, I, I, and he, for an hour and a half, he told me things that I'd never heard, and uh, it, was so, it was so difficult to listen to that there were times I would step out of the room, just tell dad I needed to go to the bathroom, and I'd step out of the room and go into the bathroom and just cry. Uh, see, hearing what dad had gone through as a child. And then at the same time, there was such a sense of thankfulness that a man that went through that could become the man that I knew. God loves to contradict. And when I heard some of those stories, I mean, some of those stories, the one thing my dad did 
did appreciate about his parents was my, my, my grandfather had a way of finding places for them to be covered and find something. He told me a story, told me a story of uh, them driving around in the car where they were living and, and his father went into a restaurant and he had a pen. That's all he had was a, a writing pen. And he went up to the owner of the restaurant and he says, if you will feed, if you will give my family pancakes, I will give you this pin. And he gave the man the pin and they, and they got something to eat that day. That was the life that he lived. And his, his dad was, he honored his dad for that in, in all of the talks that we had. But there were so, much, so many other things that were so hurtful to him that he couldn't, he never talked about them until that day when I think he, he, he just felt safe, he felt it was okay, and uh, I listened for an hour. And there's so many stories that, my, my grandmother was, was a very uh, broken woman. She was very selfish, controlling, abusive, and she was very promiscuous. And he, Dad would tell me a couple of stories every once in a while about how they would have a, they would have a, a, a good car almost all the time. And I said, how, how did you have a good car? when you had to sleep in the park and you had, you know, you'd had no money and all that stuff. And he, he would just say, oh, well, we just, mom would go to the, the dealership and they would loan her a car for a month or so. And that was the story we always grew up with. But what we come to find out is my, my grandmother would actually sell her body to bring them a car. And she would be gone for two, three, four weeks at a time, off with a man, and then come back and dad would see my my grandfather accept her back as, just, as if nothing happened. That's the kind of culture he grew up in. But my dad was nothing like that. He served the Lord. He came to know the Lord through my mom after, after he served in the military when they got married. They got married after four days of dating. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but he, he came to the Lord through my mom and, and uh, has, has served the Lord faithfully for... 76 years, married to the same woman, faithful to the same woman for 76 years. You know, one of the things he did, even as an adult, I, Ryan shared a little bit yesterday about this, this kind of crazy woman that was in the back room of their house. That was my grandmother. We didn't really know her real well, but she was very aged at the time. And, and, but dad was, here's, here's the woman who abused him time and time and time again. Who, who saw him as of absolutely no value, valued all our other kids but not him, demonstrated it over and over and over again. But here's this woman in the back room of my dad's house and my dad is helping to take, is taking care of her. That's the man that he became. God loves to, to contradict the predictions of our beginnings. And he loves to redeem what we would call the unredeemable. So my dad had the privilege of leading my, mom, my grandmother to the Lord before she went on to be with heaven. He redeems the unredeemable. My, my mom's grandfather, my mom's father, which I spoke about earlier, that was a murderer, a brutal man, always carried a, a, uh, a gun at his waist, knives in, in, in his pockets. I never met him. My mom was afraid for us to meet him. That's how terrible it was. We got a call that he was dying. I was probably nine years old, 10 years old maybe, and mom said, you've got to meet your grandfather. So we took off, went to Idaho, middle of the night, got there, and we were there too late. But an interesting thing we discovered, and as she began to talk to some of the people that were around my grandfather, that there was a point at which my grandfather gave his life to Jesus. And he, they say he became one of the sweetest men they'd ever known, the kindest men they'd ever known. So when they went into his house to clean out the house, on the wall above his bed were all the pictures that my mom had sent him of my sister and I throughout our school years. 
And come to find out, he would pray for us every single day. God redeems the unredeemable. So here's, here's the invitation that God gives us. He says in, in uh, James 4, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is the picture of the prodigal son and the, and the father of the prodigal son who had started out with everything, had everything he needed, and he threw it all away. And then when he came back to the father, not wanting anything just to be his servant, the father wouldn't allow it. He redeemed that young man and gave him a ring and a robe and a sandals and killed a fatted calf for him. That's what God does. And he says, if, you'll come, if you will come towards me, I will run towards you. And you come to me with all your baggage. You come to me with your hurts. You come to me with the destructive things of your past. You come to me with all your faults. And I will run to you with forgiveness and grace and healing. And I will restore you. That's what he does. So what about us? Those of us who know Jesus and who know, we know what that's like to have been embraced by the Father. But is it possible that there are places in our life that we still are attached to some of those brokennesses, those broken places? And we still believe that we really can't be everything that we would want to be, everything that God would want us to be, because we still have this place that we feel has not yet been redeemed. I think we do. Those places hide really well. Yeah, because you learn how to overcome them and live with them rather than, rather than turning them over to God and let him redeem those and make those places, those scars, stars. He wants to do that in every one of us. So he stands at the door and knocks, Revelation says. He says, I stand at the door and knock, and anyone who hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will sup or dine with you. The dining word there is not a McDonald's cheeseburger. This is not having a snack. He says, I will come in and I will feed you eternal food. I will redeem every place in you. If you will allow me, if you will hear the knock on the door and hear my voice. You say, well, I know his voice. Yes, you do, but have you listened in that place that's painful? Have you listened in that place that's hurtful and hard? Have you listened in that place that's unredeemed? To let him redeem you, to make you all that you could possibly be. That's the invitation. And there's nothing more. That's the invitation. So what is our answer gonna be? I know there are place, there's a place in me that I want to see redeemed at another level, another level and I'm, I'm listening, I'm hearing the knocking on his door and that's why I'm speaking this this morning. So if that's you too, you're welcome to stand and say, I, I declare I'm gonna open that door. I'm opening that door right now. I'm opening that door, I'm opening that door. And this may be, you may not even know Jesus, but you know, man, I, my life's a mess, my life's a wreck. I've thought I couldn't be anything because of all that I've gone through and all that I've done. And Jesus is just saying to you, no, no, no. It, it, it matters because you've been through it. It's not like Jesus ignores those things. He cares about what you've been through. But it doesn't dictate your future in him. And he's here to restore because that's what he does. And he does it really, really well. He, and he's calling you right now. <laughs> Ryan, would you take this? This is his mom. She may need something with my mom. So let's just pray. Let's just, let's just turn it over to him. He's knocking. Just open the door. I, I don't know how you, how you can signify that, but I, it's just being, opening your heart, opening your life to him. Say, Jesus, come into that place, that, that dark place, that hard place, that difficult place, that unredeemed spot of my heart. 
of my life. Lord, I've hung on to it and I, I felt like there was no other choice or I just felt like it was a safety net. It was something I could fall back on and make myself feel sorry for myself. I don't know what it is, God, but we just now open ourselves up and we say, we give it up. Come into that place and feed us from eternal manna right now. Feed us eternally into our hearts right now, Lord. And let those places be restored, redeemed, bought back into its rightful place that we can advance in you and that there will be no more roadblocks, no more stuck places. God, we just thank you for that right now. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, I would really love to pray with you. I would really love to pray with you and we'd love to see you come into the kingdom this morning, be baptized this morning. Listen, if you haven't been baptized it's time you'd be baptized. You just need to do it. You, you can go get wet this morning, all right? But let's have everybody stand. Everybody stand. I would just love to pray with, with anyone. We, we want to get to the baptism now. And uh, Ministry team will be ministering over here for anybody that would like to do that. We just uh, love you all so much. I just, I just want to see us all walk in freedom, right? How can we be the powerful play, people that God wants us to be until we recognize how he wants to redeem everything in our life? Everything. Everything, our past, our failures. He's just amazing at that. It's, he just does it so well. And when we allow him to do that, it puts us in a whole new level. So let me just pray one more time over you and then ministry team over here. And let's, uh, Ryan, any instruction for baptism? Just need you to, if you have children in the ministry, t in, the min in the children's ministry, please grab your kids and go on to the baptism. We'd love to have an audience there for, for these that are going to be baptized this morning. So Father, thank you for this, these amazing people that I get to hang out with. And I get to hang out with them with you in the room. <laughs> and we thank you for your presence here, Lord. I just pray over every individual. As they walk out of here, they come on new freedom. New freedom, new freedom, new freedom, new freedom to be everything you've called them to be. For those in this house that don't know you, that there, there'd be an awakening in their heart right now, an awakening in their soul right now, that you love them. You love them. You've seen everything they've done. You've seen every place they've come from. And those things have not determined how you've loved them. And those things will not stop you from loving them. So I pray that they awaken to that love now and come to the place of accepting everything you have for them. That they would draw near to you with all their baggage as you come running towards them with all your blessings. We thank you, God, for these people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, okay. Hey, yeah, come on, give him praise. Thanks. Uh, Baptism out here, get your kids, God bless you. Ministry team over here if you need prayer for anything.